So this is a story from my new book, Ancestors. And it's about the discovery of the earliest burial in Britain. So this is relatively recent compared to most of what we've been talking about this afternoon. This is a fantastic image by the photographer David Abram, and it is the coast of South Wales. It's the Gower. And that large triangular dark hole in it is Goat's Hole or Paveland Cave. And this is where the Reverend William Buckland in 1823 discovered the skeleton of what is now called the Red Lady of Paveland because he thought it was a woman. It's actually a man. He also thought that this skeleton was about 2,000 years old and radiocarbon dating shows us that it's 34,000 years old. So um, he was mostly wrong <laughs> about the Red Lady of Paveland and he was actually quite wrong about other evidence in the cave as well. The, um, the burials associated with um, a mammoth skull and lots of objects made of mammoth ivory and the Reverend William Buckland was quite determined that the burial couldn't be contemporary with that mammoth because he didn't think humans had existed at the same time as, um, as these elephants, as he called them, um, were around in Britain. Um, and actually, he was looking for evidence of the biblical flood. So his whole interest in this cave um, was first of all sparked by knowing that there were bones like those of mammoth and and woolly rhino being found there and and cave bear as well and he looked at some other caves up in yorkshire where he'd also found remains of extinct animals and he thought that these were animals that had existed before the biblical deluge and he wrote a, a huge tome on this called um, reliquary deluviani the relics of the flood and pavlan cave features features largely in that and he, he was a pioneering geologist, but he was trying to bring what he could see in, in geology and archaeology together with the Bible. So he, he was a reverend. He was also a professor of geology. Um, and he was, he was trying to, I suppose, reduce the tension that he could see between um, science and religion that was developing in the 19th century by saying, actually, these stories in the Bible are true and we can see evidence for that in the landscape. And um, I think it just constrained his thinking so much to, to look at all of this new evidence and to, to be constantly looking for evidence of a, of a worldwide inundation, a worldwide flood. And um, to be fair to him, in later, later in life, so later on in the 19th century, the evidence for actually what happened in um, uh, over the last kind of few tens of thousands of years had piled up to such an extent that he had to admit that that actually what he'd interpreted as evidence of a of an inundation and the biblical deluge was actually evidence of glaciation. So mm -hmm. towards the end of his career, he accepted that he'd been wrong, and he'd been wrong for you know most of his life. He'd been um, really pushing ahead with this theory um, but eventually uh, when the evidence had piled up he did say yes I I will accept that it is glaciation not not inundation um, so he was actually able um, even as somebody who was obviously devoutly religious to end up being more of a scientist at the end.